Here's <laughs> the big news of the day. I think it's fair to say there's probably other news, but let's, I, I'll be real. It, very slow news day. That's true. But this was the most fun story. Texas National Guard flies come and take it flag as border tensions grow. This is it. Take a look at this. Do you guys know what the Gonzalez flag is? <laughs> they have this picture. What I love about it is the flag shows, it's kind of hard to see on the screen. It shows artillery, a single star, and it says come and take it. And it was basically, uh, you know, in Texas, these guys had a cannon and there was some, you know, military officer, I think it was Mexican. And he was like, you are going to surrender that cannon to me. And they made that flag and said, come and take it. And it's just as little artillery is not very big. And it's just one. But this symbol that was made that day is it's powerful. And right now there's concerns that Joe Biden will make moves to federalize the National Guard. Abbott says nationalizing Texas National Guard would be a severe Biden political blunder. But we don't know exactly what's going to happen. I, I think a lot of people, uh, the smart move on Biden's part is to slow down and back off and let things simmer down. Otherwise, if he makes a move, it can escalate quickly out of his control. But of course, because that happens, everybody seems to think nothing will happen. I don't know that that's the case, considering all the other news that we've been seeing and the fact that even with the Texas National Guard putting up the razor wire, this has not stopped. The bill that's being proposed where Joe Biden's like, oh, I've done everything I can. You got to give me the power. The bill they're proposing would give Joe Biden 5,000 criminal aliens. I'm not talking about migrants or asylees or whatever. 5,000 criminal aliens every day would be allowed to cross. That's the deal. Joe Biden, basically, I got, I got to give it to him. He's a math. He must have read the art of the deal, read some Donald Trump. The big ask. Joe Biden allows wave after wave of criminal migrant to come to this country and then says, how about we stop it at 5,000? And that's a deal. Brutal. I don't know where this goes, Texas National Guard. I know uh, you've been down there quite a bit and you've seen some of this. So I'm curious your thoughts, Taylor. Yeah, well, I mean, just in Shelby Park and in Eagle Pass in specific, I mean, it is cleaned up. It is day and night difference. I mean, really? I was down there, I would say, at the beginning of January. And I mean, they went, I did a little tour with National Guard. They were nice enough to let me in and actually go and see the razor wire. And, you know, they kind of gave me the ends of how many crossings had actually been stopped. On average, they were averaging anywhere. When I was down there, it was six to four migrants a day compared to, you know, I was there the month six prior. Six to four thousand? No, six to four. That's it. Wait, 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 wait. With, with National Guard in Shelby Park, in one of the regions in the Del Rio sector that used to be one of the most popular. And I mean, they were shattering records every single month. It was month like 10,000 per day. Yeah, well, in the month before that, if you guys saw the kind of makeup apprehension site where you had thousands, I mean, filling in every single 10 minutes as one line is cleared another line fills that's how much of a difference that it has made in that one sector so now you're seeing rises in the arizona sectors wow. and migrants are making their way over there or 15 miles you know upland and now they're crossing in that area but and it's still not nearly as much this so is it is working this is the challenge of separate states sovereign states the biden administration as a federal agency just wants to bring in criminal criminal aliens so when texas sa says we're going to push back all the Biden administration has to do is, well, I shouldn't say the Biden administration, but whoever is communicating with the cartels to let them know how to operate, send them to, send them to Arizona. I'm sure they got CBP down there that's willing to facilitate the, the human smugglers operations. And if anybody who lives there tries to defend their property, we, we'll, we'll put them in prison. Right. That seems to be the case. And this wasn't the case under uh, Doug Ducey, who, had, who was really supportive of Abbott. He also bust people out of state. Uh, it, it's... Uh, apparent to me how obvious the changes in our state leadership are to people in other countries, right? We have we know people pay attention to the America's uh, presidential elections, but I think the turnover from a Republican governor to a Democratic governor immediately opened up Arizona in a way that became apparent to the international community that's looking to perforate the border. Yeah, well, and Arizona is an absolute mess right now. If you look at like Ali Bradley or any of the reporters of the News Nation that are down there, they did a really good job at covering it. And now you're seeing numbers spike in that area once again, while the Del Rio sector is drastically dropping. And, you know, there's a big difference between those two sectors, the kinds of migrants that you get through. You get a lot of Chinese nationals coming through in the Arizona sectors. They're treated a lot differently in Tapachula, which is kind of the conglomeration uh, grounds in Mexico where, you know, they're kind of sent up. I mean, they have full blown hotels and, you know, routes and guides for these Chinese people because they have more money so and then they're guided into over in you know the tijuana area and they're treated you know with respect they don't really have to go through the cartels but the venezuelans the hondurans those types that you're seeing come through eagle pass consistently you know they're oftentimes being traded from cartel to cartel every single step of the way 
We did when you were down there before the National Guard shut everything down, right? Yep. And then afterwards as well. So explain ex- explain like just what it looks like when CBP's in charge. When CBP is in charge, it's an absolute mess. I mean, it is migrants coming in at all times of the day, all times of the night. Most of the biggest influxes you see is anywhere between like 5 to 9 a.m. in the morning. That's really when you see them get hit hard with the big caravans that cross over. You'll have an NGO. Last time I was in Mexico, I like to report from the Mexico side because I feel that's kind of where the story actually is. You can follow the caravans over and the NGOs, they're located in Mexico. They'll have, you know, two double wide, basically barn doors that they have anywhere between a few hundred to a thousand migrants in that are ready to go that morning. And then they'll walk them down to the river, the coyote will, if they have one, and then they'll cross them into the Rio Grande and then they'll be put in that makeshift apprehension site. At least that's how it was Criminal last aliens. month. Yes. You accidentally said migrant. Yeah. Yeah. I have tremendous respect for migrants who come to the United States, believe in the American dream, apply at the appropriate border crossing and say, thank you for everything you've, mm-hmm. you've, you've, every opportunity you've afforded me. I hope that the, the paperwork moves through and I can come to your country. Well, and none of them are actually going through the checkpoints. And of that's course. for a reason. Well, no, no, no. Migrants are. Mm-hmm. Criminal aliens are not. Yep. And and that's the legal term. I, I think, uh, you know, uh, shout out James Lindsay. He had this post where he said, do not use the leftist language. It is a political agenda. So when we are specifically referring to individuals who are committing crimes against the United States and against Texas, and they're being assisted by the Biden administration, to which the Texas governor has called out the Biden administration, administration for doing, those are the criminal criminal aliens. And I just, I would not want to besmirch the good name of migrants, because I like migrants. I, I like the people who respect this country. It doesn't mean they get to come in, doesn't mean they get to move here, but sometimes they do. And through the appropriate means that's beneficial to the economy, beneficial to the communities, what's going on with the with southern border and CBP and Biden is is the is the antithesis. It is destructive. It is chaos. The crazy thing to me is, as you describe, like these NGOs bringing these big caravans, what's their goal? Just sowing chaos and hurting these people? Basically, every single step of the way. I mean, they get paid every single step of the way. A lot of the NGOs that operate in Mexico are also operating in America. So, or they're working together in some fashion or some capacity. So you'll have them cross And then immediately after they're done being processed, the NGO will step in, which, you know, in Eagle Pass and all these other border towns, they quite literally have buildings there. And then they start facilitating these migrants. And then, uh, you know, the one in San Antonio that I was at last month or at the beginning of January, where San Antonio PD was essentially running private security, facilitating the human smuggling of these illegals, they quite literally put them in this area for an X amount of time. And then they say, hey, you know, if you can afford your own ticket or they kind of phrase it in a little more aggressive manner, they try and get these illegals to buy their own tickets. And then if they aren't willing to buy their own tickets after a certain amount of time or they can't afford it, they'll end up saying, okay, we can pay half. And then if they still can't afford it, they end up paying the full thing. Who's paying Who's paying it? The NGOs. Wow. I mean, they should be, they should be, uh, there should be some kind of criminal uh, uh, investigation charges against the organizations for mm-hmm. facilitating illegal immigration. I mean, it's laughable. CBP the only reason the cartels and the smugglers are able to to operate is because CBP was like, we got you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, and that's the same thing with the, you know, San Antonio PD running security for this facility. Yeah. They are essentially taking cartel money because cartels will pay these NGOs because they're doing their dirty work and their groundwork for them. And then it's washed through San Antonio, the city of San Antonio, essentially, and then given to these officers at a higher rate than they're already being paid, which San Antonio PD They're already getting paid good money, but they're still willing to go and do this in uniform and actually guard these migrant facilities and essentially threaten you with arrest if you keep asking them questions as they did with me. Feels like there is a boa constrictor on the neck of this country, Mm -hmm. slowly just squeezing and squeezing. And uh, man, the challenge is discipline. I feel like the best thing we can do is hope that by voting for Donald Trump, he gets in and starts to reverse course. And there's no guarantees that happens. But that is the best path forward we have right now. And that being said, Greg Abbott seems to have done a lot to to abate this. But now, now we need Arizona and New Mexico to do the same. New Mexico won't. New Mexico will always just say we're an open door. They're Democrat run. They're trying to ban guns. They're doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Yeah, New Mexico, Arizona, California, they're not going to do anything. And they think that's one of the reasons um, Abbott taking such a strong stance was 
a rallying cry. We saw so many, what, over 25 states said, we're with you, we're going to support you. And they aren't all necessarily directly attached to the border, but they feel the burdens of illegal immigration as well. We know that, especially the Biden administration, has moved people who come illegally throughout the country. And this becomes a nationwide problem. I think for a long time it was marketed as, well, it's just Texas's problem. It's just in the border communities. And, you know, that frustration really lit a fuse. And uh, I mean, Operation Lone Star, Abbott's initiative to to close the border and to a- add more state um, power behind efforts to restrict illegal immigration has been going on since 2021. I mean, he launched it alongside the Biden administration. And you're, they're really seeing this come to a head after four years. Well, and you see a lot of those states that are actually signing on are actually receiving an influx of illegal migrants, too. Or I should say criminal aliens, as Tim states it. Well, that's that's yeah, the that's legal the term. legal term of it. Right. And I mean, even Utah. I remember when I was flying back from my San Antonio and Las Eagle Pass trip. I'm looking at these illegals uh, pass. I mean, these basically these boarding passes that are makeshift, and they're co- completely different most of the time than most other boarding passes. And I'm looking through some, and I look at my gate, and I see six right there. And I was like, "There's no way they're coming to Utah out of all places." Yeah. And lo and behold, they're coming to Utah. They're in Chicago. They're being mm-hmm. flown on private jets. I mean, it's just absolutely nuts to think you out there. Listen, hardworking American, you lived your whole life. You followed the rules. You don't break any laws. You got a job. You went to school. You got married. You had kids. And you see on Instagram and you see in the news, these people getting to fly on these private jets. And you think, you know, what did I have to do differently in my life to be able to fly in a private jet? Apparently, you need to be born in a third world country and then illegally enter the United States because they are putting these people on large private jets flying them through private jet terminals to big cities, giving them hotel rooms, cell phones, and debit cards with thousands of dollars in cash. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.